I want to tell you about some of my favorite children's books that have come out in the last few years, and I want to see if you can figure out what they have in common. These books are Color Me In, Too Far From Home, Spinning Silver, Get a Grip Vivi Cohen, Letters From Cuba, This Is Just a Test, and The Way Back. Do you see any trends emerging from those titles? What if I add some older titles like The Book Thief or The Librarian of Auschwitz? What about an even older text? Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Did these clarify a theme? All of the books I just mentioned have a Jewish main character. The books span genres, locations, and time periods, but each one tells a unique story about a unique Jew. Some of the Jewish characters are biracial, some are black and some are white, some are Latinx, Asian, Middle Eastern, African, or European, but all of them are Jews. Now, when I rattled off that list of description, chances are some of those descriptors were surprising and not what you might associate with Jews. So why do we associate a specific image with Judaism? Ever since I moved from New York to Tennessee a few years ago, I often hear the same two comments about my Judaism. The initial comment is that I'm the first Jew a person has met, and then the follow-up is that I don't look Jewish. So when I hear that I don't look Jewish from someone who's never met a Jew before, I can't help but wonder, how did you learn what a Jew is supposed to look like? The best answer to this question that I can think of is media, more specifically for my purposes, books. Jewish representation in literature has had a storied past, if you'll forgive my pun. Long before books like Mouse or The Boy in Striped Pajamas, Jews have had a fairly long history in showing up as characters in literature. Take, for example, Shylock from Shakespeare's Merchant or Venice, or Fagin from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist. But even before then, Jews showed up in medieval texts dating back to the 14th century. We even are mentioned in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, a text so old it wasn't even written in modern English. So what do many of these older representations have in common? Well, some frequent descriptors of Jews from these texts include being a present danger to the community, ugliness, greediness, and untrustworthiness. These are, to put it mildly, not great descriptors for any community of people, and certainly not ones that Jewish people have enjoyed being associated with. Now, you could argue that characters like Shylock and Fagin are obviously not meant to accurately reflect Jews, or that these authors are relying on stereotypes to get across a wider message about greed. But the fact is, if some of your first forays into Jewish representation is the greedy and violent archetype that gets used over and over, well, then that's a dangerous thing. But these texts are old, right? And modern kids don't really read Dickens anymore. So where are young people today getting their image of Judaism from? At this point, it's important for me to define a term for you. Judaism is considered an ethno-religion. That is, Judaism is a religion, or an ethnicity, or both. So not only is there a wide spectrum in the level of religious practice amongst Jews, but because Judaism is an, eth is an ethnicity, we run the gamut in terms of race and ethnicity and therefore appearance. There are Jews who are black, white, Asian, Middle Eastern, Latinx, or any other identity group, and all of them are valid Jews. The problem with stereotypes relied on by authors like Shakespeare and Dickens is that these images not only pair Jewish characters with unsavory descriptions, but they also ignore the reality of the widely varying appearance of Jews. That is, if you can even find Jewish characters at all. Looking specifically at books meant for children, Jews make up a pretty small percentage of characters. Even now, popular publishing companies produce very few children's books each year which center Jewish stories or Jewish characters. And the books that do come out typically revolve around one of two themes, the first being Hanukkah. Now, of course, any representation is better than none at all, but celebration of holidays is only one small aspect of Judaism. In essence, this would be like setting every single Christian story in late December and highlighting Mary and Joseph's stay in the stable. It's good, 
but it's not enough. Additionally, modern publishing is contending with a lot of baggage from the golden era of children's literature, which included such giants as Roald Dahl, who was a well-documented anti-Semite. His book, The Witches, not only portrays negative stereotypes about disability, but also dabbles in anti-Semitic tropes as the witches being big-nosed child killers who secretly run the world and have loads of money. So in modern literature for children stands on the shoulders of authors like Dahl, it makes sense that any Jewish representation would be a good thing. And to give credit where credit is due, Jewish representation has been increasing over the last few years. Well, if celebrating holidays is the first popular theme, what's the second? Let's pause for a moment. I want you to close your eyes for me. Think. What was the last book that you read which featured a Jewish main character? Hold that character in your mind for me. What was the big event that they were involved in? Increased Jewish representation in literature arose with the new type of Jewish character, the Jew in tragedy. That tragedy, more specifically, is the Holocaust. I'll bet a few moments ago when I asked you about the last Jewish character you read, that the Holocaust was probably the event they were involved in. Jewish ch children's literature, too, is rife with books about the Holocaust. Though more common for teenage readers, Jews and the Holocaust seem to go hand in hand in literature. It's actually pretty uncommon to come across a book for middle grade or young adult readers that has a Jewish main character in which the Holocaust is not somehow mentioned. The story might not even be explicitly about the Holocaust. It may play a secondary role um, as an explanation for generational trauma or perhaps a piece of jewelry handed down a family line. Of course, so many Jews and their families have been affected by the Holocaust and that trauma is very real, but the trauma shouldn't just be used as a plot point in a book. The fact is, like so many other racial and ethnic groups who have experienced trauma, Jewish characters are often placed solely within the scope of catastrophe. However, it remains to be a very common topic in books. In fact, within the genre of Jewish tragedy sits so many of our classic Jewish characters for teen and adult readers alike. At the same time that we've seen increased Jewish representation, Examples of children's literature with blatant anti-Semitic representations have become less common. However, they're not totally removed. Take, for example, the bankers from the magical world of Harry Potter who are portrayed as greedy, gold-loving goblins with big noses. A more recent young adult novel titled They Wish They Were Us engages anti-Semitic stereotypes by describing a Jewish main character who is a member of a secret society of rich kids who control their school and, by extension, their town. In the majority of contemporary mainstream children's literature, Jewish characters are typically difficult to find, are either paired with holiday celebrations or trauma, and are sometimes still shown in anti-Semitic caricatures. Rarely are they allowed to simply exist as people who contend with other issues or who are exploring other aspects of their identity beyond their Judaism. Let me read your mind again for a moment as I ask the question that's on the mind of some people right now. So what? So what if Jews aren't getting as much representation as other groups of people? So what if that representation isn't always 100% accurate? Let me bring you back to my main point. Jewish representation in children's literature matters, especially if it's the only Jewish representation that some children have. Like a fair amount of people in Tennessee, there are lots of people in America and across the world who have not yet met a real life Jew. So these literary depictions are hugely important in informing children about concepts of Jewish appearance and culture. Furthermore, it's us, the adults, who are responsible for providing these representations when we provide books to kids, be it a parent bringing a child to a library, a teacher recommending a book to a student, or a friend buying a gift for a baby shower. Ultimately, when children are lacking an accurate Jewish representation, they grow up to not only say things like, you don't look Jewish, 
but they also run the risk of internalizing inaccurate and painful stereotypes about Jews. These stereotypes lend themselves to anti-Semitism at large. They force Jewish children to constantly strive to prove themselves in their identity or to disprove negative stereotypes about Jews, and they deprive non-Jewish children of accurate information about the world and the people around them. These representations then must be accurate and multifaceted. Like other identity groups, we too deserve ample and accurate representation in literature and across media. Stories that center Jews cannot just be about tragedy or holidays, and they cannot reflect back the same old inaccurate stereotypes about Jews. We span so many different racial and ethnic groups, and we deserve to be treated as such. The image that so many of us hold of who is a Jew is simply not accurate for so many Jewish people, and it harms all readers to subscribe to a single image of what a Jew looks like or doesn't look like. What this all boils down to then is what does a Jew look like? I'd like to simply answer that question by stating that modern Judaism is multiplicitous, and it has to be treated as such. Jews are not a monolith, and it's harmful at best and dangerous at worst to pretend otherwise. Many educators, librarians, parents, and book buyers are beginning to diversify the books they purchase, but I want to remind you that diversity is not only related to skin tone and race. We must also include religious diversities. It's not enough to only have multicultural families all celebrating Christmas. We must include stories about Jews. Stories of Jewish joy in addition to Jewish tragedy. Stories of Jews living in modern times, not confined by centuries-old stereotypes. Stories of Jews that accurately represent the great amount of diversity that our religion holds. Stories of Jews who have so many other aspects to their life than just Jew. I want to leave you with a challenge and a call to the first Jewish character that I read about, Margaret Simon from Judy Bloom's Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Margaret, in addition to navigating first love and puberty, frequently questions her own Jewish identity. In the novel, she asks God and the reader, what difference does religion make? I want to challenge you today to notice the difference that religion does make in literature. Notice the complexities that exist within the Jewish community and notice if when and how we're represented in books, because kids do.